Most of the benefits of that bill went to the wealthiest people in America. $1.9 trillion in tax cuts, most of it to ultra-wealthy and large corporations. And of course, there was little talk about the deficit and the debt when that was going on. Now we're in the midst of a pandemic and COVID-19 has killed more than half a million Americans. Americans are hurting, our economy is hurting, millions are unemployed, and our friends across the aisle are asking how little we can get away with doing at this moment in time. They want to know how much we can cut from President Joseph Biden's American Rescue Plan. Can we cut money to open schools? Can't we just wait? Let's just wait and see what happens. That's their question. How about cutting funds to help families from losing their homes? How about cutting the funds for vaccination sites? How low can we go? $1.9 trillion in tax cuts for millionaires and billionaires, no problem. A president who denies the truth about a pandemic as it rages across America, no problem. But when Americans elect a new president with a mandate and a plan to finally break the back of this pandemic, get our economy back on its feet, get our kids back in schools, and actually help American families, suddenly a lot of folks on the other side of the aisle have lost interest. Do you remember last year? I do. We discovered this COVID-19 and started to worry about it, as we should. And in March of last year, we passed a bill that cost almost $2 trillion, the largest spending bill in the history of the United States under President Trump, and it got 96 votes in the Senate. 96 votes. Every Democrat and every Republican senator who voted, voted for it. I was one of them. Did I stop and say, wait a minute, President Trump may get credit for this. No. We had an American crisis, a challenge, and we needed to respond to it. And then what happened in December of last year, while President Trump was still in office, the second COVID-19 rescue plan came through, some $900 billion. I was one of those who was part of drawing it up, and I voted for it, no questions asked, we were still in the midst of a pandemic, and the economy was flat on its back, and I didn't care that Donald Trump was still president. There was work to be done for America. 92 senators voted for that. 96 in March, 92 in December under President Trump. Well, how many Republican senators are now stepping up to help us with the American Rescue Plan that President Biden has proposed? I'm still waiting. None so far. Now it's become a partisan exercise to talk about dealing with the real pandemic and economic crisis of this country. What's going on in this chamber? Have we decided now, since we have a new president of a different political faith, that the other side cannot support efforts to increase the amount of money for vaccines and distribution across America, to send a cash payment to families that are struggling to get by, to give unemployment benefits to millions of Americans where those benefits are, are scheduled to run out in just two weeks. All we hear from the other side is, you know, we may be overspending here. We, we should have thought of this before. Yes, you should have, and you didn't under a Republican president. Now it's become an issue. A year ago at the beginning of the pandemic, 96 to zero for a $2 trillion COVID relief plan. Maybe if we had had an administration that wisely managed the COVID response, we wouldn't have been in that mess. Maybe if we'd have had a president who for the first year of this coronavirus wasn't making up stories that it's gonna go away, it'll disappear by Easter, it won't be a problem, if everybody would just take a shot of Lysol, uh, if a new chemical I've discovered some of my friends are taking and all the rest. Remember that? Remember those press conferences? And what was going on while the last president was ignoring the reality of that COVID-19 pandemic? America was getting sick and Americans were dying. We have 5% of the world's population and 20% of the COVID-19 deaths. 
what's going on here in a great nation like America? Well, for a year, we didn't get it together because we didn't have a president who accepted reality. Now we have a president who accepts reality and wants to do something about it. He was elected to lead and he wants to lead. Where is the Republican support? Democrats were there for the Trump plan. The Republicans aren't there for the Biden plan. We wasted time and resources, but now President Biden wants to turn it around. The American Rescue Plan proposed by President Biden and passed by the House of Representatives last week without a single Republican vote, no Republican support for it, has support of 80% of the American people. Overwhelming majority of Democrats and independents, even Republicans. It turns out the only people in America who are against this approach of taking this pandemic seriously are the Republicans in the House of Representatives and apparently in the Senate. Every day this Senate delays passing the Biden American Rescue Plan, more small businesses close their doors, workers lose their jobs, parents turn to food banks and soup kitchens to feed their families, and more and more families face homelessness. One provision that was included in the House version of the American Rescue Plan will not be part of the Senate plan, and that is a gradual increase in the federal minimum wage. Now, I understand the rules in the Senate, particularly when it comes to reconciliation, as conceived by the late Senator Robert Seabird, are almost impossible to understand and to defend. I get it. I'm not blaming any one person for that. That's a reality, and I've been here for a while, and I've seen it. So currently, we cannot offer the federal minimum wage under the so-called reconciliation bill because of the bird rules. Our Senate parliamentarian ruled last week that passing a federal minimum wage increase as part of the rescue plan is not permitted under those rules. I respect the parliamentarian's judgment. I may disagree, and I may be disappointed, but I respect her judgment. A Republican friend should know this, however. Senate Democrats aren't going to give up on raising the minimum wage. The issue is not going away. You know how long it's been since we raised the minimum wage in America? Twelve years. Twelve years. The presiding officer knows that. That's the last time we increased the federal minimum wage. Twenty-eight states have done something about it, but 22 have not. And we don't have a change in the federal law. That is the longest that our nation has ever gone without raising the minimum wage since Congress created that wage in 1938. During this pandemic, billionaires, people like Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, they've done pretty well. They've seen their net worth increase by billions, even tens of billions of dollars. How about middle-class families? What do they see? They see their savings dwindle and they're, they're, find it almost impossible to make ends meet. Fortunately, as I said, many states are acting. Washington does not. 29 states, including Illinois, the state minimum wage is higher than the federal minimum wage. The federal minimum wage is $7.25 an hour. In Illinois, our state minimum wage is set to reach $15 an hour by 2025, just like the Biden plan. Most states that have increased their minimum wage have done so because their state legislatures have come to the rescue. Some states like Missouri and Arkansas raised the minimum wage by ballot measures. Americans support raising the minimum wage. I see Senator Leahy's come to the floor from Vermont. Remember when we used to have a colleague back there in the back row? who would stand up and bellow about the minimum wage. His name was Ted Kennedy from Massachusetts. He didn't let a month go by or two months go by without reminding us that a lot of people were struggling to get by in this country, and we sit here in Washington ignoring it. And that's why he would push for an increase in the minimum wage. We're told that $15 an hour is exorbitant by some, that it's going to hurt the economy. The truth's just the opposite. Raising the federal minimum wage gradually to $15 an hour will strengthen the American economy because minimum wage workers are most likely to spend the money they get. 
on the necessities of life as soon as they get it. Food, clothing, housing. Last week, one of our Republican colleagues gave a speech and said that he worked for $6 an hour when he was a kid. And he's opposed to the $15 an hour minimum wage. Well, if you took that six bucks when he was an hour and just matched it with inflation, it would be up over $15 an hour today. Reminiscing about the good old days of $6 an hour is only done by people who don't have to live on $6 an hour. Contrary to popular misconceptions, most minimum wage workers are not teenagers. According to the Economic Policy Institute, 59% of workers who would benefit from the federal minimum wage are women. Women. They're taking a beating in this pandemic. Staying home to watch the kids who can't go to school, trying to deal with daycare that's closed down, losing their own jobs, that's the reality. Many mothers, two-thirds of them are the sole or primary breadwinners of their family, count on the minimum wage. Nearly one in four workers who would receive a raise under $15 federal minimum wage are black or Latina women. During this pandemic, America has relied on minimum wage workers to do the hard work and dangerous work in the pandemic. You want to know the real pandemic heroes? You want to reduce poverty and raise the opportunity in America? Pay workers a living wage. Allow workers to share the economic prosperity they are creating with their dedication and labor. So, Madam President, at this moment we may not have a path, but I hope we can find one. It is time for us to raise the minimum wage, to give the American workers the real wage they need to survive and to show that we really do value the dignity of work. I yield the floor. President. Senator from Vermont. Madam President, I want to associate myself with the words of the distinguished deputy leader. His, um, nobody has said it better. Nobody could, but in the 